See the full animated short at playoverwatch.com. Welcome back to HGC Europe. We just witnessed an Illidan solo a core while the entire team pushed into a fort, a keep, an attempted core. It did not work out. And I have to say, I'm not okay with that decision, Claris. No? I'm no. not okay with it. There is there is counterpoints on either side. Yes, I think I agree. So we were talking uh, just a little bit before, and I can understand why B Genius actually goes for that move. Reason being uh, is because they are down three levels at that point. Sure. So they know that that could be possibly one of their one opportunities to eke out a win, knowing that level 20 would be rapidly approaching for Team Expert. But you don't entirely so agree. I look at it from a different uh, attitude. I look at it as mentality. Yeah, um, yeah. There's, there's team morale to consider mm -hmm. when you're playing in that round. You're in the best of five series. You're in game number two. Yeah. Um, so it's a high risk, high reward play in my eyes. You either go for the win and you get the win. And oh man, you got momentum going. But if you get beat out by a solo Illidan killing your core and you didn't send one person back to defend it, then suddenly you're deflated going into game number right. three. I don't see how B Genius, with the mental fortitude to even go into game number three and have a chance at being in the game, right? I would feel so deflated. I wouldn't want to listen to my shot caller. Now, granted, again, we're in the HEC. You need to bring it together and be yeah, a team. Yeah. But there's still that element of like, what was that call? Why'd that happen, you know? And then you mm. have to discuss it. And then the game, in my point, like in my eyes, I feel like this entire best of five is over now. So overall, what we're saying is, if B Genius were perhaps like listening to this, which obviously they're not because currently they're, they're in a game. They're on the game. Yeah, they're focusing on the game. Yeah. They would like to listen to my, uh, my uh, outlook on it. Yeah. Because... <laughs> I mean, you go for it. I get it. I get that I mentality. I totally yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, it's, it's something that it really hurts. Overall, the the team camaraderie when that kind of play happens when it's it's as simple as like you peel one back yes. and just don't get mighty gusted. Right? I I can There's understand your argument. Yeah, and I can understand yours too. Like I get right. it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a double edged sword for yeah. sure. But you know we're constantly listening to you guys at home. Let us know HGC. Hit us up on the hashtags and of course we have a couple of tweets already that has been floating around on the interwebs. Crossing my fingers. Oh no. Wait. Johnny Quest 1903. Okay, now Calaris has crossed a line. Tay Tay is the bomb. <laughs> I agree here. I, with Johnny Quest. I enjoy being the villain of this broadcast, all right? I don't care. Don't worry. We'll, just, we'll shake it off. <laughs> oh, hey. All no. right. J How Gaming. ADRD. Uh, team experts drafting around tasks was so absolutely brilliant given their matchup. So many layers to it, and I am impressed. What's up, J How? If you guys get a chance, check out J How, man. He's one of our awesome casters Aww. in the scene, and he creates wonderful content on YouTube. So definitely give that guy some love. Just as a point, all your favorite things are rubbish. <laughs> Apart from Heroes of the Storm, that's pretty good. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start up. Game number three, we're going to figure out our battleground, start figuring out the draft and go into this. But it should be genius, man. I just, I feel like you're so deflated after that loss. Like, it's just such Maybe. a shame. But at the same time, you know, they have to pull it together here. And it's a best of five series. Any game can matter. Be genius with the ban here on the left. Expert with the ban on the right. We went to game number one for Tuma Spider Queen. Game number two, we're going to Infernal Shrines. And uh, B Genius continues to pick the battleground here. We are going to BOE for the first time in a while here in Europe. Cool. They could put something crazy out here. Uh, we don't get to see Battlefield of Eternity much at all, as you're mentioning. Uh, so they could pull something crazy out. But what is important to note now is that Team Expert on the road through phase one, on the road to Katowice, on the road to doing well here has had a brilliant start so far. Agreed. And if they take one more map here, they will be 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Yeah. So far, that is absolutely fantastic for a team coming in at the start. They haven't hit the big three yet, but they're putting some uh, foundations on that uh, on this uh, season very nicely. Yeah, I agree with you. They get confidence, they get momentum, but I yeah, things start to get rough for them starting next week actually. They hit uh, Dignitas first and then Fnatic and then the week after they hit Misfits. So yeah. their bumpy road will be coming. Can they continue to go on the smooth road here? It feels like uh, as we get ready for the draft here on Battlefields of Eternity. Now Calaris mentioned we could see something on here, and there are a lot of odd picks that can occur. Yeah. Uh, Sylvanas is the thing. Uh, Greymane could be a pickup. Taronda as well. She's falling out hard. But uh, these are battlegrounds that suddenly these type of base race scenarios can become legitimate plays. I have this crazy feeling where, like, if we're ever going to see Cho'Gal in our first two weeks, this could be a place we see it. I don't think we're going to see it. Uh, we actually, even in NA last night, did see a Cho ban. Yeah. I <laughs> I was at home secretly wanting a gall ban next because I'm just I'm the actually, double value. I'm actually the worst person in the world, <laughs> but whatever. 
I'm going to do that next time I'm in here. Like, if I see a Cho Gal I'm going to ban Gal just for you. Even if I'm on the yes. opposing team, just to have that synergy, you know? I'll tune into that stream. Okay, perfect. Tonight. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, so, Team Expert will start off with their ban phase here. And I just want to watch their drafting unfold, man. It's so brilliant how they handle the Tassadar exchange in the last matchup, where they essentially pinned their opponents into a spot where they didn't get much Tassadar value. <gasps> Tassadar actually has a, uh, a, a loss down wow. in Europe. Yeah. Uh, back off the back of Team Expert evaluating the threat of it and letting it through. So I think overall, very clever by Team Expert uh, and well executed. So this surely, well, actually, you know, Oh, God. If you're being genius, was... <laughs> what do you what do you start thinking now, right? Like this is uh, the stuff that teams have to deal with constantly. Against yeah. expert. We as casters get confused by it. Uh, now suddenly like... you're thinking, what what do I ban? Like what? How do I hurt expert? Yeah. Oh God, that's annoying. <laughs> um, do you ban it or not? Do you, do you take something away like a? I don't know anymore. I give up. I think you. I'll take my heads off. I wouldn't mind the strategy <laughs> being you just ban something else out that you think expert runs well here. Yeah. And you just go for your standard pickups of Tychus okay. Malfurion, and then you just figure out Tassadar as you go down the draft. Uh, they elect though to go ahead and ban it out for now, and now expert will have the first pick. It's it's a weird situation you're in when you see a Tassadar ban in the first wave, and it feels kind of valueless. That is a strange situation to be in. Um, Do I understand the meta? Expert just makes you question it, right? I've just, I've gone, I'm blank. <laughs> I'm a cream pie face of blankness. There's Ragnaros. Expert will take that's, Ragnaros. That's almost kind of what I wanted B Genius to ban, but then I just. Then I just, they go down the wild ride of ADRD's ban and uh, yeah. phases. Uh, so do they go into Tychus Malfurion here? I feel like Tychus loses some value on this battleground um, just because while he does have consistent DPS, he doesn't have hard hitting DPS for the Immortal phase, but he's still a strong hero if you have to deal with the opposing team pushing into you. This realm needs so, B Genius agrees, it seems like, as they pick up Li Ming here, which Li Ming's so, value goes up heavily on this battleground. Yeah, or whether they're tailoring this composition to start things out for the poke war. That's where Li Ming thralls, uh, thralls, thrives and excels on this map when you actually do pick her, compared to a Ragnaros, who's more in your face. So Team Expert is looking to try and get the pace of the engagements. I mean, Terry is a bit more aggressive himself as well, but yep. I think he'll he'll do okay. Sanctification to save if that team fight does occur. And this <coughs> also puts the weight of thought on Expert here. Do they want to ban Grand Main now or take Grand Main? Because Tyrael is one of the foundations for that combination. Um, mm. And Grand Main feels like a weird hero to ban out. It really does. But if you were going to, it's a good map too. Yeah, he agreed. races. He races like a beast. <laughs> that he does. <laughs> Some kind of worgen or some, something. Some, some kind of strange wolf creature. Some kind of World of Warcraft character that just destroys things. <laughs> yeah. Some kind of bloodlust. Perhaps cursed. <laughs> uh, so, Expert, what are you going into here? They get Ragnaros. Uh, there's a couple things that you can start doing when you see that B Genius is looking towards bracing. You can go for the hard engage, which Artanis provides, but also provides the amateur opponent. Yeah. And you can also go the route of CC. Malfurion fits that mold perfectly here. And now they have a, four, a great foundation for their fourth and fifth pick that they can move into. I, yeah, I think that is a true jack of all trades for this map. Great. I think it's a really cool pick on the Artanis. You don't see it as much in Europe as you do in North America, but this is the place to pick it. As you're saying, the great engage. I'm just going to repeat everything you just said. The great engage, the amateur opponent. Yeah. You've got the best of both worlds. You've got the race. You've got that hard engage that Ragnaros and Malfurion would rather like over the Leeming. I think it's beautiful. The displacement is insane to deal with because if you are losing the uh, immortal race, you can chase in with the Artanis and you get swap and you might get a stun based on your own immortal mm. if you have to defend it. It's just, it's such a great pick on this battleground. Before Artanis even got chained slightly, people were still considering him as one of the heroes to go to on this battleground. And, and now you've got to think on B Genius' side, they're staring down at that themselves and they're thinking, damn it, ADRD, that guy, because that is a scary three already to go up against. That it is. Considering what you're, the position you're in, two games down. Team Expert wondering what they would like to get rid of. You can get rid of Greymane here if B Genius goes that route. With Tychus being banned out, I feel like we actually might see a Zarya from B Genius. Uh, that's kind of what that's screaming to me is they want to go for multiple warriors to kind of help out with this Artanis uh, engage that will be occurring, which is a good idea because Team Expert has two melees here and a Malfurion. Uh, if you go down another warrior route and you have a Zarya, you have a Tyrael, you have a Li Ming poke, you could theoretically 
uh, waste time on the opposing team with multiple warriors and mm -hmm. have Li Ming do poking, and then when fight occurs, you can break it out heavily with her going in with a calamity build. So uh, we'll see what BOE is going to be getting here from B Genius as their third and fourth pick is definitely very important and a huge indicator of what they would like to try and do. Yeah, I think I, I still like the gray main. I still think that's cool. Uh, four, then there will be, and Karazine. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Karazim, uh, solid. Iron Fist, great early game. So it's kind of cool, because I think Karazim has two builds on this map. I feel like it's not getting picked up in competitive yet, but I feel like the Iron Fist build is fantastic for helping race the Immortal race. What's cool here is True. you can put Greyman on the Immortal by himself, or you can put Karazim on the Immortal by himself he and have much? the other four defend. Yes, his Iron Fist is actually insane with the... Uh, uh, ability to pop its E, start chaining yeah. it down. The okay. Iron Fist is so strong. I also think that Insight build can be relatively powerful on this battleground. It is a bit selfish, though. You have to not be in the fights until you hit that Insight quest finished off, but then you have cooldowns in the mid game to where you're popping out so many heals if you're getting your punches on a hero like Artanis that will be in the middle mm. of the fight that your team literally cannot be killed off unless they get rid of the Karazine first. All right, what does Team Expo go for? Two choices left. This is interesting. I actually don't know. I, I gave up on predicting Team Expert. I I actually like Arthas a lot with Artanis. Yeah. I think I like Zarya with Artanis as well. You want someone that can help bolster that push. They pick up Anubarak the and Medivh. Oh god, here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. I see you. <laughs> I, I need to watch it unfold, but I see you, Team Expert. Fifth pick here, I need another warrior or another support. Um, but I can't figure out which support would be the one that jumps out to me. Rhaegar would be my first choice, but it's been banned out. Uther <laughs> could work, but that's a scary thought. Um, I think I'd rather go down the tank route. Yeah, tank. And I would move into Murden. Um, ETC's been banned out. Yeah, I'd move into Murden then. Uh, just be able to handle that Artanis. But also with the Anubarak being there, you also have the chance to go for uh, Skullcracker Executioner, and you can kind of deal with the Anubarak too. Does that... I keep coming back to it for B-Genius, but I kind of like Johanna again. I like yeah. the idea of having a bit of a shield glare as a blind against a lot of that auto attack. Yeah, I like Johanna and I like Arthas too, also. Uh, I just, yeah. There's three warriors that stand out for me. I just want to know what B-Genius goes for. Cares even if he goes damage build, will start to hurt in the mid game. Wow, they go for false dead? Solo Tyrael at the front. <laughs> with See, no, I get, with I get, no shields. I get the yeah. idea is like Artanis gets the engaged and he gets mighty gusted away, but to cover that, we have Expert on Medivh with, I'm going to say it, the best Medivh in Europe mm. who knows how to handle and engages. He hits 13, he has the extra portal duration, and that Mighty Gust kind of becomes obsolete. Um, so I see the idea behind it. I don't know if I like it. Yeah. I don't know. You still get the ability here if it comes down to a race scenario. Um, and then both teams decide that they want to go defend. You can peel false that off and then mm. come in with the fly-in. So the global is helpful, but it gets negated with this being a two-lane map. Um, I just look at over at Expert here, and because that last pick falls stat, yeah. I think they have the upper hand, even though it kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm still pretty critical of solo Tyrells that aren't in the compositions of the big three. Like, yeah. we've seen uh, Misfits run it uh, in, in one of their series, but that's because well, one, they're misfits, and two, they had Tassadar for shields to sure. help out. Uh, Fnatic ran it in their previous series that we just watched uh, in the last game, and it was, uh, again, it was, you know, uh, Fnatic going up against Synergy, which was, you know, probably just going to be very much so heavily in favor of Fnatic anyway. So I am wary that this won't have the power that they want it to. We'll see how it shakes out. I, I, I do think there is some late game strength here, for BGNS, so they do have the early game race potential. Yeah. And then if they go into late game, they can make it work. We'll talk more about it, though, because it looks like we are ready to move into game number three here. Can Expert finish it here with another 3-0? We'll find out now as we move into Battlefield of Eternity. BGNS taking on Team Expert. Alrighty, to the left-hand side in the blue. It is BGNS looking to recover themselves in this series, and they have taken it. They have picked map each time. I do like that strategy. Uh, trying to find a solution here to Team Expert. Yep, just not quite working out for them, but it is working out for the opposing team <laughs> that is on the right side here. It's Team Expert in the red, and you mentioned it already. They have a 3-0, 3-0, and potentially another 3-0 under the belt here, which is something to 
boast about. Yeah. That is actually insane here. The highest level of play here in Europe that they're going to be walking away at the start here in week number two with potentially a 9 in 0. And they've got their coveted Medivh. Again, you know, it's very hard to dispute that he is not the best Medivh in Europe right now, ADRD. So there is uh, scary times ahead here for B Genius. I feel that with Greymane, with the, the fists, and maybe try and win the race. Um, I, that might just be the way. Yep, we'll see if that happens here. As Poke will begin for our two teams here, Nick will be the one to keep an eye on, as he is going to be the main racer here for Team Expert, with the ability to work in that amateur opponent on the uh, Immortal. So, well, his movement is going to be quite exciting to watch. Bad Benny does have a choice here with the Nubrak to be complete harassment. If he can hit his impales on the Grey Main, he can slow down the siege potential yeah. of B Genius for a while. But they also have to remember Karazine here with that Iron Fist. Uh, one of the scary things is here for B Genius is if they do uh, actually lose out on one of the immortal fights, then in a similar vein to why I think Medivh is strong on. Uh, Infernal Shrines, he's strong here as well. They can easily dive on through, th through the wall while the Immortal is pushing on against it. They won't have the, you know, the companionship of the Immortal on the other side, but they will put pressure on and zone you out while you are trying to deal with the Immortal. So that could be scary as well here for people. Yeah, they have a lot of dancing available on this team. I think it's a way to put it. Um, so here we go. Immortal spotting in the next three seconds. All right. Our teams have soaked as much experience as possible, and I want to see how this will unfold. Unstable already begins the Iron Fist damage on the Immortal. Yeah. They, they know that they have to be in the right oh. positions. Oh, the stun. Oh, no. Oh, a disaster for B Genius as Li Ming unfortunately falls prey to that first stun from the Immortal. Trick. What a mistake there by Li Ming. Normally, you wait for the last second until you teleport, but with an Anubrak sitting right next to your face, you need to teleport mm. instantly so you don't get chain CC like we just saw there from Bad Benny. Well played by the Anubrak, and that will give That's... Team Expert the lead in the Immortal race. I, I, I was about to say before that happened, they did well. They positioned themselves right as that Immortal was coming up. They got some good damage on it, but overall, oh, what a slip up. What a mistake. I agree here and we continue with the back and forth. Thanks for the win and team will push in and defend against their opponents. An expert with such a lead right now can kill off their opponent or their teammates. They can get Ragnaros in the top lane here. Bad thing is to keep an eye on the Grey Ming. They'll be fine. The saving grace of a kid over on the Lee Ming is that he has had some really good series on the Lee Ming. So I don't think, you know, this is by any means over for him. I think he's still going to have a good game. Just a slight slip up there uh, overall. It will cost them that Immortal though. Uh, and that means now Team Expert is going to exert themselves. Uh, they are basing in a very... Okay, it gets away. Because the rest of the team didn't start backing, so that means that Dantan yelled out, I should be able to escape. The Impale, though, is great from Bad Benny, and here's He's the dead. portal. And Danatan goes for the engage. There's the Blade oh. Dash, and that is a dead Tyrael. He will be a Fallen Angel. Basing there is so risky because of the fact that you know your opponents might just want to go and collect the Health Globes from that location. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, tough, tough times here for B Genius. Maybe after that second game, they are a little bit shaken. Yeah, and I wonder why. Oh. <laughs> all right. Five, uh, four-man push here in the bottom left here as all of Team Exit will push into the sport, continue the pressure. Kirwa on the right side starting to get the poke on the uh, bad Benny. He is low on HP. There is a force of will from uh, Medivh and ABRD and crew will yeah, just sneak uh, away. There goes cool. the uh, face prism, but slightly too late there from Nick. It will not connect with Kirwa. Ragnaros the entire time, though, has been soaking the wave, and Falset is mm. forced to go deal with it. Off build as well to start things off for Lee Ming Kira as well here. So he's really looking for that poke potential down the line. Uh, not wanting to risk too much. This is going to be fought over for a moment. Bad Benny double rows in there against Kira for trying to zone him out. That's a great little force of will. Soaking up a lot of the damage there from him. And they're going to bolt through that portal for the moment here. The genius almost losing unstable. Bad Benny trying to keep himself alive on the left hand side. That's going to be tanked for the win. Going down on the right though. And Bad Benny just tunneling away. Oh, oh. The last second there, the carapace saving him. Yeah. Uh, the hammering almost getting the carry. I like the play there from Eric King, though, trying to make a play, Definitely. but needs to be careful there, especially with our tears floating around. That could have been deadly for the Falstad, but uh, for the moment, I did enjoy the pressure. Now, Nick will start the camp here on the right. That amateur opponent really coming in to be helpful for clearing such waves. 
bad, Benny will be here for the assist. And so far, three kills in the favor of Team Expert, and they are showing the lead here with a about a half-level lead. Yeah, a little fight down there, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, on false that side with the, the mage stat, with the fact that he's going to be gathering himself some shields at level four. I like that Arakeen's doing that. Um, I, it's they, they know that portal plays are going to be a big issue here. Uh, and anything that you can do to keep yourself alive for just that little bit longer against uh, Team X, but I think it's going to pay dividends. We do have Nick getting the uh, slow on his faith because here for level 7. I will say that on this map, I really do prefer follow through. Just that extra damage for burst, especially sure. because he, he's so melee heavy. Uh, this comp is in general, so having extra damage could have been a good pickup, but they elect to go for the slow. Uh, I feel like if you get the swap against this comp, you're probably already winning the team fight anyways. Kirwa does get locked down though, and oh. that will be the engage. There's a the hammer from Blade, and that was an instant deadly ming. And that comes at just the wrong time once again, unfortunately, here for Kirwa, as they're just gonna start to put pressure, good pressure, on towards this Immortal. And now with ADRD there, it's even difficult to tank for the win, as well as, uh, who's that in the middle there? It's um, unstable. To be that far forward, because Portal plays could easily start rivaling the positions behind that Immortal. So, yeah, difficult. Yeah. Li Ming actually was probably the worst one to lose there, because Li Ming is the only one that opens up fights with the poke that she has yes. for the team, for Greyman to yeah. go in. Greyman can't do anything there. He can work at some auto attacks, but that all that requires is the opposing team to walk away, get the inner beast wasted, and then you go back in for the fight. Um, so yeah, Li Ming getting picked off was definitely very deadly there, as Team Expert takes a slight chunk on that Immortal phase. Ragnaros went to the bottom lane to continue soaking experience, and Expert still in the lead as they are moving towards level 10. Yeah, Expert has no rush here with this Immortal phase currently, because they know they're closer to that 10, as you mentioned. Get him a swap again! Oh, manages to get away from all oh, the burrow! Oh. Bad Biddy showing up here like a shark, yeah. killing off Li Ming, and there is another pick off. Dude, Kirwa is having a bad day right now in this match. He picks Calamity too, which means there will be more dies for sure as we go throughout this game. All right, so uh, Danatan just throws his Elder into Might forward to see what is going on on the other side. And um, we will see Arakeen and Blade towards the top. Arakeen having to soak something. Best hero to do it for them, considering he can just fly to reinforce an engagement. But 10's about to pop, trick. That it is, and DRD and crew now hit level 10. Um, so we have uh, Locust Swarm, we have Twilight Dream, the Deep holding on to his heroics, certainly gonna be Leyline Seal, and actually there it is, Sulfur Smash, and Suppression Pulse for Arcanus to help out with that base base scenario. If they're ever at even footing, they get Suppression Pulse to Grey Main and be good to go. And now they've got to be super careful. Medivh's there, could easily throw a portal. They're going to give it, a, it's a full 20,000 health left on that Immortal. It is a full shield, full health Immortal. They're going to lose both forts from this. Like, that the is one disgusting. Yeah. This is, is it, it's snowballing out of control at this point. He just needs to make a move. Uh, soon here. Yes. We have a slight yielding cocktail build with an auto attack build from Grey So they can do a solid job of clearing this up, but they have to break through that shield and not get swapped. Take for the win, will dodge the swap here from Nick, but the root goes off. Ghost. Here is the Eric King. They're going in for it. The portal is down. The sanctification to stop it from occurring here as the engagement goes in once again, but Eric King in the back right corner. And now Team Expert with all the heroics down decides oh. to engage. <laughs> there is a swap for Roni. Danatan in trouble. Here's a burrow charge. Unstable will get the escape, but two members down from B Genius. I'm looking for more here. That Immortal still at full health. All the shields have dissipated now after getting that port. So they lost the bottom four just naturally because it was so low. Blade did well down there, pushed that out. And now they're looking even for keep. ADRD and this team in Team Expert here. A great standout players from Bad Benny. Nick has got the swaps all game long. Expert once again putting on a clinic. They could take a keep here at nine minutes in. Now everyone from B Genius has spawned. Remember, this is a low amount of time for people to start ooh. dying. So, ooh, we're getting resets now. Okay, yeah, B good. Genius going in. Can they save their keep? They did save the keep. It's about a quarter of health. Eric King goes for the fly, though, charging in, looking for more here. With no a new wreck on the field, there is no major peel available, and no one to take that damage from Kirwa, so Kirwa <laughs> is looking for more. There's a teleport, though. ADRD will guide his Artanis away. Tank for the win, though. Does dive in. Suppression Pulse has been popped. 
Where is the kill here? Kira was looking for it. Oh, there goes the Calamity, but the portal's here in time. Blade goes for the exchange back, but does miss a Sephiroth's match. The retreat out was just so well executed there overall, as now Master's Touch is done for ADRD, who can even barely be surprised. As the swap comes in there towards Odanatan, uh, it might be Terio, but he's still not exactly the most uh, protected warrior of all time. Not exactly the most health either. Looking for a stun towards Araki. Do not get it. Bad Benny, though, still leading the charge. 13 against 12 currently. Nick has picked up Gravitation on Vortex, and I want to say this is the Artanis play that I've been looking for in Europe the last couple weeks. Finally, someone to show me how it's done here. He's working in these auto attacks. He's also going for the swaps, yeah. but he's picking these talents that allow for his team to snowball a fight if he gets a pick. And it was a smart pick. Uh, let's just talk about this fight for a moment. That's a great sanctification here. They should be able to steal this away. Expert has to move away from that position. Leyline Seal, do they follow it up with an attack? No, it doesn't look like it. They just want to escape out. Good escape out there, considering the damage that was put on and that wave of force. Yoni Hawkeye are doing a lot of damage here. Here comes Erekin, though. The hammering will be available. Can he land it? He does hit. Curse himself. Fierce smash, though. Jeez. Connects with the false dead and false. says, nope, I don't want to fight anymore. We'll roll away. And now B Genius is going to escape with yeah. nothing in terms of kills. So that. Again, here for HCC Europe, there was finesse in the Artanis pick. We talked about it, you know, the the fact that it, it solves so many problems for them halfway down the draft with the swaps, with the hard engage that they needed against a poke composition, with the fact that amateur opponent lends itself so nicely to the battlefield of eternity mentality. Uh, so I think it fit the comp really well. I don't think Artanis is an all comp solution like uh, currently we're seeing Whoa, in uh, careful. NA. Careful treading on my bay. <laughs> okay? Sorry, I mean, man. I know, Sorry. I agree with you. He has situations that he fits in. Too many people are playing him as this stitches pseudo hero, but Kinda, he doesn't yeah. feel that role as much. Uh, Immortal Phase now up once again. Five members on the defense here. 4B Genius, team expert, looking for a way in, but decides maybe it might be worth it just to spread out here and continue our soak and get some pressure on the map as we continue the uh, dance around the Immortal Phase. Right, so, yeah, this is uh, a little bit of a better spot actually now for B-Genius, indeed. They have themselves, all five members, going into an immortal phase. They have the, the equal talent tier, but got to be careful of the swaps. Got to be careful of those uh, PVE stuns as well. Knock, knock. B-Genius hitting 13, makes a move on the immortal. Bad Benny is here to help defend. The rest of Team Expert now starts to show up, but the immortal is getting bring down pretty quickly, actually. Oh, Eric, though, know, in trouble. There goes the mighty gust. The pressure pulse comes out. There is a teleport. ADRD goes to the ley line. Seal will connect Damage. with two members in the back right. So fear is smashed timing, but the seven-sided strike will save Unstable. There is a Twilight Dream. Yeah, and they could follow this up for more kills here. That's going to be a good little dash there forwards for Nick. Greymane will end up falling. The rest of the B Genius lineup in disarray. They fall back. They're all so low. And that's probably going to be an immortal going over to Team Expert once again. Oh, the force both last second here to keep Kirsten alive. And yes, that will definitely be immortal, but more. We're going to get the keep, too, at the same time as two so, members head towards the keep. And Artanis is soloing the immortal back home. Yeah, so all keeps are dead at this point. This this immortal should be able to get keep at the bottom. Uh, and now Team Expert is just, they're all over it. Um, I don't know how B Genius is going to be able to recover from this spot, considering how well Team Expert has executed these fights. The only way to do it is to get Reset City going. Uh, you need to find a way to take out Medivh. So whether you start to engage on someone with, uh, maybe a swap happens, yeah. and you put some damage on Artanis, the Force of Will comes out, and then you all have to dive somehow, some way, take out Medivh, and then the fight starts to crumble heavily here. Medivh is the one that is keeping this composition that Team Expert is running alive. If you don't have the teleports, Artanis take it out of the fight. Ragnaros has a hard time. He has to use his uh, E button to get away. Now, Furion can't escape. Anubrak's the only one that has an immediate burrow charge away. Taking out Medivh is the number one priority. It's just so difficult to do. Mm, it is, definitely. So now, Medivh, IDRD, and Bad Benny looking and lurking around the front of this position, just hoping for an opportunity. Any little strikes with the amateur opponent that Artanis can get on the towers is powerful. He brings them down fast. So now, there is a timer above B Genius' head. Can they solve this puzzle here? They're not gonna have 16, they're gonna have to take this fight somehow, somewhere. The swap into the oh. Immortal, knockback oh. into the Sephiroth Smash! Leyline Seal comes out as well, Lee Ming on the back right trying to do something, but she's just tickling at this point. Another swap, another dead member, B Genius running, trying to hold two members alive. Nick and the legendary swaps, let it go down that he had that Team X expert 
absolutely dominated this game. And they are a perfect 3-0, 3-0, 3-0 here in week two of HGC. With an overall score of 3-0, tying here with the Misfits at the very, very top, but yet they have yet to drop an actual game unlike the Misfits. So, expert playing Artanis, doing me proud, but uh, <laughs> overall, just really just dominant play, it feels like, as they uh, come through the first couple weeks yeah. of HCC. Actually, and we could take a look at that again, because that, that was beautiful. The Immortal was my favorite part here. The timing was just perfect here from Nick. He has yes. the Blade Dash and the Phase Prism up right now, but he's waiting for the Immortal to go for an attack that he can throw someone into. Once he sees it winds up, he goes in for the Q into the E, pulls it back, slam against the wall, Sephira smash, and that just. was a devastating destroy. Yeah. Uh, spectacular. Really nicely done there from Nick. Yeah. What, what a play. What a play. Gotta agree with you, man. Uh, again, it's good to see our chance being played here uh, in the HEC by Europe because I've been waiting for so long uh, <laughs> for him to really become such a, a strong pick for teams. And here on BOE, he definitely finds his place. But Nick, again, man, kudos, dude. I don't, I don't normally say that to our chance players, but man, you have impressed me. Uh, overall, though, the drafting, again, continues to be a story for... Uh, our team, Team Expert, every time they go through a draft phase, it just feels like they just have this upper hand on their opponents. It looks good. Uh, and uh, again, admittedly, it's not against some of the stronger teams here in uh, the HCC Europe exactly. just yet. Um, but they were willing to let Tanisadar through. I don't think when they run up against the top three, uh, although it could end up being on a different patch, of course, uh, that they would let that happen if it was in this current iteration. Uh, but later down the line, who knows uh, where the new Tassadar is going to find his place. Yeah, we'll have to see where that does happen. Uh, we are going to be getting into a call with ADRD soon. We're working on uh, establishing a link with him. And then, of course, we'll start the connection because I want to find out what was going through his head there. As uh, honestly, it just seems like this team just has it so well put together. Actually, do, are we there? ADRD, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. ADRD, first off, man, congratulations on your victory here. Your team is up 3-0, uh, actually, in the standings, which is fantastic. But uh, I just want to get your thoughts, man. The easy road seems to be over. Your next three opponents are going to be the big guys. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. Like, uh, we didn't lose a single map yet, which I think shows a lot. Yeah. Because other teams, even Fnatic and Misfits, lost some maps versus even worse teams already. Wow. Okay. Well, I just you said that straight up. <laughs> <laughs> Clarice, any questions from you? Uh, I'm curious just to see. Um, obviously, like a lot of people consider you to be very, very powerful in the draft. Do you think that the even the big three can kind of rival you in that stage of the game, like uh, putting mechanics aside in the actual game? Uh, I think it's actually a good question because, in my opinion, the bottom teams, mm -hmm. the biggest difference between them and better teams is the drafting. So, when you you can see us doing very good versus worse teams. Is the big part of it is that we are out drafting them very often. Right. And versus teams like Fnatic or Misfits, it's not really possible. But we can uh, sometimes surprise them, and other times we'll be at least even. Okay. Okay. Well, a DRD. Next week you do go against what would consider be the top three. Ding Toss is your first stop. What's <laughs> the number one thing for you guys going into that fight, and what you're going to try to do? Uh, you don't have to reveal strategy. Think, it's totally cool. Yeah, of course. I think we just try to prepare some maps, like at least one of or two strategies that will be surprising for them, and they'll be not prepared for that. Right. But I think we can even take games from them when we play our standard game. But it might be standard for us, but it's not necessarily standard for other teams, as you can see from <laughs> what our drafts usually. We, we heard from Bakery yesterday, uh, and he was saying that your fixture going up against Team, uh, team Dingtas versus Team Expert is probably the biggest fixture of Phase 1, the, the biggest match of Phase 1, uh, in that that will probably decide who goes to Katowice. Do you agree with that sentiment, and do you think that you can defeat them and move on to the Clash? Uh, I think he's actually right. The... But I think it's also possible that Misfits might or other teams might drop some other maps and it will be like freeway tie okay. for the third place. So then it counts like how many maps uh, did we win, right? Right, yeah. Awesome. Well, yes. ADRD, once again, congratulations on your victory today. Congratulations on your last couple of weeks. But if you have any crazy shout outs you want to do, now would be the time. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, and I would, I would like to shout out for Team Expert for picking us and believing in us. And to all my fans that are supporting me because I'm in the scene for a long time and I know that a lot of people follow me from the beginning when I started playing and I would I really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much. And again, another thank you for your Medivh play, dude. I have definitely got some stuff to work on to be as good as him. Uh, so that's it there from ADRD. And I know over here that we are excited for next week's matchup. But let's see how everything shakes out in the standings for our teams. As right now, Team Expert and Team Misfits are at the very tippy top here with the 3-0 victories. Yes, they are. Unfortunately for B Genius, they fall down to 0-3 right now. They've had some hard matches themselves. So uh, in a similar vein to how tricked esports are, in uh, that position, you know, I, I imagine while they are, you know, gonna, you know, for B Genius, it's gonna be a little bit still more of a difficult road ahead. Uh, they're 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 in that kind of spot, but they could quite easily take, you know, a, a series here or there. Yeah, definitely, we'll keep an eye on B Genius uh, again. At least the thing I take away from today's series is that I'm excited to see that B Genius is willing to take risk, mm. uh, like we saw in that game number two, where they're like, all right, you know what? We're not doing so well here. Let's go for a play. Yeah. And they're willing to pull that off. And maybe if it wasn't Team Expert or was another team in the matchup, they take that win. Mm. If they get on the core with the Punisher and they get the DPS necessary, they can make it work. It's, it's good to see this team is trying to figure out ways to find victory. Yeah. And then on the flip side, I said at the very beginning of all of this, Expert is my team to look out for, and oh boy, so far are they delivering, and I don't think anyone has any idea how